All right, how's everybody doing? This is the Comic Samurai. I want to welcome you to my next video. And tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at one of my favorite comic book cover tropes or gimmicks. And I call it a Habsy Habsy cover. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we've got this Terminator number one done by Dark Horse Comics. And this is a perfect example of a Habsy Habsy cover. And it's got that line right down the middle, and it just begs you to cover up half of that image and see what his endoskeleton looks like, that metal frame, when it's been burned off in the blast. And then when you switch it to the other side, you get to see what it looks like when that blast hasn't occurred yet, and he still has all his skin over him and everything. And then when you uncover it, you get to see how his skeleton fits under the flesh and the clothes fit on it. I always like those two images next to each other. This is a great example of a Habsy Habsy cover. Next up is Midnighter number six here. And we've got another one that has a line right down the middle. And you just have to cover up half of that image and see what he looks like where he's got this helmet on and like this headdress here. And then the other side of the Midnighter and just his costume there. And when you know that look on his face, somebody's going to have to pay a price. That is a fun, havesy havesy image there. Next up, we got Savage Dragon number 21 here. Now on this one, the dragon's been burned. And you'll see half of his face is burned up, but you can cover it. And imagine what it would look like if he didn't have any damage. And then cover up the other half and imagine what it'd look like if it was all scorched. Those are so much fun. Next up, we've got the Flash, number 213. And we've got this image of Wally West there. And you can imagine what it's like if all of his mask was still on him. Or what it looked like if that mask was removed. That's a fun one. Next up is Bloodshot number five. This is a Valiant comic here, and it's kind of one of those that's right down the middle. You can put that dividing line. It's fun to cover that up and then do the other side. And you get to see the two images and then combined into one. Next up, we got Nameless number two. Now, this is a Habsy Habsy. You can see that whole image there is cut in half. And what would it look like if it was that kind of abstract picture and then that more realistic take on the image of that figure's face there. But together it makes a unique image. Next up we got The Darkness number nine here and this is a Sylvester cover. And again you can see what it looks like if he's out of costume and then when he does have the power of that darkness and it's covering him on the other half. That's a fun one too. Next up, we got Superman number 263 here. And on this one, half of him is in flames. And you can imagine what it looked like if it was just kind of like a lava monster or something. And then you get to see what it looks like if he didn't have any of that flame on him. And together, it is a unique image. That's a good one. Next up, we got Azrael number eight here. And this is another one where these sustained damage. And you get to see what he looks like if his mask was all intact there. And then what it would look like if you just saw how it was burned off of him or removed in battle or whatever. But it's crazy there. And together, it's fun to see it. Next up, we got Darkness number four. Another one of those darkness covers. Another Sylvester image. And we get half of him. That's one of those demon things that he can control. And the other half there is just the figure of his face there with a bit of a mask on the bottom. All right. Next up, we got the Hulk number four. And this was a fun image here of half of Jenny Walters getting transformed into the Hulk. And then half of her just uh, in her human non-transformed face. And then both of them together. That is fun. Next up, we got Dr. Fate number eight. And it's another one of those images of a transformation where half of it has got his helmet on there. And then half is that crazy female form, like wincing in pain. That is fun. Next up, we got Starlight number one. This is a fun John Cassidy cover. We get to imagine the youthful image of that character. And then kind of his aged, more seasoned look there. That is a good one. And then the whole image uncovered. Next up, we got Sin City, a dame to kill for. Number three, and of course, this is Frank Miller's take on a Habsy Habsy cover. And you can see what Dwight looks like when he's all bashed on one side of the face. And then you can see him 
when he hasn't got much damage at all there. And it's such a different look and uh, facial expression that when you put it together, it is a unique image. Next up, we got Dix number three here. And this villain that's coming after the two main characters there. Half of his face has kind of been eaten away. So you get to imagine what he looks like is like a zombie skeleton thing. And then his real gruesome visage there coming after him. And together, it's kind of a fun one too. Next up, we got Caliban. Number five here. Now, this was one of my favorite horror stories. It really was one of the scariest comics I ever read. And you get to see the image of that uh, evil alien taking over the human there. And then you get a, a picture of a, a different alien there, too, that was taken over by the being. And it's kind of a fun mix of those two images. Next up, we got Batman the Long Halloween, number 13. And you've got this kind of riff on Two-Face there of this pumpkin that's got half of it rotted away and then half of it just a normal jack-o'-lantern with the bat symbol there. So not only is it a mix of Batman and Two-Face, but two different types of pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns also. Next up is Dark Victory number 12, and this one does feature Two-Face, and he's probably the most prolific character that has havesy havesies where it's almost a straight line in his face where half of it's been burned off by acid and then half is kind of that charismatic handsome visage of Harvey Dent. Next up we got Secret Origin Special number one here and I had to do a Brian Boland take on Two Faces Havesy Havesy burned image. I love the look of that acid fried side of the face there and then how dapper they make Harvey Dent look when he hasn't been hit by that acid there. And together, what a great example of a havesy havesy. Next up, we got Showcase 93, number eight. Now, this is a Glenn Fabry image here, and you get to see his take on Two Face here. So there's kind of the smiling image of Harvey Dent, and there's the crazy, wide eyed, acid burned half of him there. Oh, that is gruesome and horrific there. I like Glenn Fabry. Next up, we got Jonah Hex, number one. And these are always fun ones to see what he looked like if his whole face, if he was just a normal gunfighter in the West, and then see what he'd look like if his whole face was just that uh, burned up, scarred mess on the other side there. Oh, I do like that one. And that is a Frank Quietly image there. Next up, we got 52, week three here. And this is a pretty good image of Lex Luthor who's half blue on one side and half kind of a negative red on the other. That is an interesting take on Lex Luthor there. Next up, we got Blackest Night Titans number three. And we've got an image of Dove here, and half of her costume has been removed. And I love masks that are havesy havesies where you get to see what the character would look like without their mask and with it and how it fits on their face. That's fun for me. All right, next up, we got the demon, number 54 here. And it's that image of Entrigan, and half of his face has been damaged there. So you get to see his skull underneath, and then you get to see it as the demon's face. Now, this is a fun one, because it begs you to do it when it's right side up, too. So it's a twofer that you get to do Two times there. Oh, that's fun to see Entrigan like grimacing in pain. And then why is he grimacing? Because half of his skin has been removed and it's just his skull underneath. Oh, that is too much fun. I love a comic that you interact with. Next up is Crisis number five here. And this one is split right down the middle between images of heroes from Earth 1 and 2 split. So if you can make that out, it's like Green Arrow from Earth 2... Green Lantern, Wonder Woman from Earth 2, and then on the other side of the line is all of their Earth 1 counterparts there. And I thought that was a clever use of a havesy havesy cover on that one. Next up, we got Flash number 299. Now, this one features different treatments on the Flash, where half of it is this rainbow type treatment on his costume, and then the other one is like this black shadow. So you get to imagine what it looked like if it was totally taken over. And the two contrasting treatments 
just really play off of each other well. Next up is Amazing Spider-Man, number 206. And, oh, I do love these halvesy halvesies where you get to see what Peter Parker would look like if he was wearing his Spider-Man mask and then what he'd look like if he was totally out of costume there. And then what it looks like, how his mask actually fits over his head. That's great. Next up, we got Amazing Spider-Man number 366. Now, this is a twofer on this one again, too, where you get the Red Skull, an updated version of him, and Spider-Man with his mask on. And then on the other side, a different version of the Red Skull, smoking that cigarette, and you've got Peter Parker without his mask on. And when it's revealed, look at how the two images of the Red Skull mix. And I love to see how the mask fits over the head of Peter Parker. That's fun. Next up is Ghost Rider number eight. And one of his main villains here got half of his face burned off. And you get to see what he'd look like if his whole face was all burned. And then what he'd look like if he hadn't sustained any injuries there. So that's a fun one to see. It's a kind of a two-faced treatment on that villain. Next up, we got Punisher Nightmare number one. And this has got a good image of a soldier here. And you can see him when he's in his camouflage fatigues. And then you get to see the Punisher on the other side of it. It's kind of trying to say like two halves of a coin, or two sides of a coin. Next up is Deathlock number seven. And that was another great character that had a halvesy halvesy like cyborg skin coming through on his face. So that's if he was all one cyborg. And that's kind of this uh, zombie-like image that he always had where his nose is like eaten away, but it's not exactly a cyborg yet. Next up, we got Iron Man number 11. And on this one, they juxtaposed the image of Iron Man and Doctor Doom. And those were always two great characters to play off of each other. And it's a great Wills Partacio image of Doctor Doom there. And then his take on Iron Man was always interesting. It kind of had a beak to it or something like that. But it was an interesting take on those two characters melded together. Next up, we got Fantastic Four, number 277. And on this one, we got two different versions of Mephisto. You've got like this classic devil face on that side there. And it's contrasted with this more demonistic entity type visage of Mephisto there, but they do mix well. Next up, we got Fantastic Four, number 257. And these halvesy halvesies just get better and better. On this one, you've got Death and Galactus images mixed. So you got Death on that side. Oh, beautiful image by John Byrne. And Galactus on the other. Oh, that really is beautiful how they mix to make one image. Next up, we got Astonishing X-Men, number 21. This is a John Cassidy image here colors on it are beautiful but you can imagine what Emma Frost would look like if her costume was just regular normal and it was all just shown and you can contrast what it'd look like if it was all covered like you can't even make out who that one is oh that is fun to reveal how her costume like covers her almost in half exactly next up we got Kitty Pride and Wolverine Number two. Now, this whole series kind of had a havesy havesy run through it, but this was the best example where you've got Kitty Pride on one side, and then you've got Shogun, I think was the name of the villain there, with his devil mask, demon mask, on the other. And those are great covers done by Al Milgram. Next up, we got Marvel Comics Presents number 97. And this is kind of a fun Sam Keith image that he did a havesy havesy on, where you've got like this skull. Native American symbol with all those feathers contrasted against a beautiful Sam Keith image of Wolverine there. Oh, that is fun. Next up, we got Marvel Comics Presents number 72. And this is that famous Weapon X story done by Barry Windsor Smith here. And it is a good havesy havesy where you get to see Wolverine and in no costume. So what his bare figure looks like. And it's set against him in full costume. And what a beautiful image that is. Oh, I love being able to imagine him. And seeing how his costume fits over his body and his face. That is fun. Next up, we got X-Men number seven. And we got two images mixed of Wolverine and Omega Red here. So you can imagine just Omega Red there, that villain. How fun is that? Jim Lee does such good work. And on the other side, Wolverine. So it's fun to see those two 
like pitted against each other, how equal they are. That's fun. Next up, we got Uncanny X-Men number 211. And this is one of my favorite examples. It was one of the first ones I ever saw, done by John Romita Jr. And this one, you get to see Wolverine and how his mask fits him. I always wondered how it went over his sideburns and things like that. And this does a pretty good job of showing how his mask does fit over his face there. Oh, that is so much fun. I do remember looking at this one as a kid and just covering it up and saying, that is so much fun to see what Wolverine looks like with and without his mask, like this New Mutants 97 done by Liefeld. This is his take on a Habsy Habsy. And look at how good that is, where you can see what it would look like with his whole mask on and then what it would look like if it was removed and how that mask fits over his hair and over his face. Oh, I love that. Next up, we got Wolverine number 154, and it's another Liefeld image. And he really likes that Habsy Habsy trope of Wolverine. He does it quite a bit. Oh, that is such a great costume there. His yellow and blue mask. And on the other side, that great image done by Liefeld. Oh, it really is a beautiful image. And together, I think that's an iconic cover that doesn't get nearly enough attention. I really do like that one. All right, two left here. Next up, we got Marvel Comics Presents number 70. And this is the third one of Rob Liefeld. He really likes that trope of the Habsy Habsy on Wolverine's costume. And I think this is the best one where you get to see what it looked like with his mask still on there and his grimace on his face. And then you get to juxtapose it against his mask being removed there with that grimace as only Liefeld can do there. It is such a great image. This really is one of the most underrated covers that I know of. I love this image. It's a wraparound cover and it's beautiful. All right, I always save the best for last. And finally, we've got Spectacular Spider-Man number 120. And this image of Peter Parker in his black costume, you really get to see how that costume fits on his head. So there's a beautiful image of Peter Parker there. And the bonus on this one is, was that it was one of those 25th anniversary ones. And I am so glad that they picked this image to do a Habsy Habsy on. It really is a beautiful mix of him with his costume on and off. So you get to see how it fits on his face. Well, thanks for joining me tonight. These are a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. Cover up half, cover up the other half, and then see how they mix together. Thanks again for joining me and have a great night.